Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our first video in a series about programming our smart robot kit. Uh, what you should have already done is this uh, beautiful robot kit right here that you see. You should already have it assembled and you should already have it kind of working right out of the box. It should work. It has some pre-programmed code into it. You should be able to drive it around using the remote as well as the app that it mentions in the directions. So we're not going to cover anything about that. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to plug the USB cable right here into our computer. And uh, when you plug it in, so this is right now switched off in the back. Um, when you plug it in, you should be able to see the red light here go on to indicate that it is indeed working. So I'm going to zoom it in just a little bit here. And uh, we're going to be kind of close up for a little bit. Um, you should have that red light on and working as well as you should see on the other side, right about here, you should see this green light kind of flickering. And I'm going to try and zoom it in a little bit maybe and get that a little bit more so you can see it. We're not really going to be doing any of the wiring or anything in this one. We're just now going to be worrying about really for this first video, getting the software ready and essentially making this first green light right here blink. And I think you should be able to see it pretty well, uh, hopefully. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started um, in the computer. What you should do is uh, in the video description, you should have some links for sure. And one of them is to the software download. So an IDE is an integrated development environment and most languages have this one. For robotics, usually we use the VS Code. Um, and for this one, Arduino has its own development environment, which is free for you to use on Windows, Mac, and Linux. On Chrome, uh, maybe not so much, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So the first thing is that you wanna select the option that's right for you. Mine's a Windows system, so I would do Windows. If you're on a Mac, do Mac, obviously. Um, so select whatever is good for you and then go ahead and get into there and follow all the prompts to go ahead and get that thing installed. Um, once you have it installed, what you should be able to see is this little icon that pops up. This is the Arduino icon. Um, you should be able to just double click that thing and open it up. And that should pop open with a, a code environment that looks something similar to this right here. Um, so before we get into the actual code here, which we're going to get started with in just a moment, I wanted to show you a couple of things that are available to you. So um, online, there's also an online editor and you have to kind of log in. I have an account for this. If uh, you can install this on your system, you can always do this. And I linked this in our document, the create.arduino.cc. I linked that in the video description as well, if you'd rather use the online environment. And with a plugin, you can actually connect your Arduino right to this online environment, and it works wonderfully. Uh, if you are on a Chromebook, this Chrome Duino, which I've also linked in the video description, is going to be a free development environment, which mimics what the our Arduino IDE does. Now on uh, Chrome, the Arduino, they have an app. And for some reason that app is not free. It's like a dollar a month. So this Chrome Duino is definitely the way to go. It's um, as most things you're better off doing on a Windows Mac laptop. One of those two uh, is always going to be a little easier. Now, the last thing as well, is for every programming language, there is always documentation and Arduino is no different. As a matter of fact, Arduino is one of the best for documentation. So what they have in this reference page, which I've also linked in the video, is they have all the different things you can do on, with Arduino. And even more importantly, they have some examples of how you would use it. For example, if you do this switch case statement, which is another important robotics element, um, you can see they actually have an example of how you would do a switch case statement in Arduino. 
All right, so let's go ahead and move on into the code. And uh, let me give you a little bit of an idea about what Arduino code does and how it works. So when you get into your Arduino, uh, one of the night into your coding environment, your IDE, uh, one of the best things they have in this file menu is these examples. So they have a whole lot of examples. Some of them are applicable for us, some are not. But the one we're gonna do first off is this example that says in the basics section that says blink. So when you open that, actually I already have it open here. Uh, what they have is this demo program and this program without writing any code is going to be something that you can upload to your Arduino, to your robot here. And just to double check to see whether it works. One of the hardest parts about Arduino is actually just getting it set up so you can upload to the board. Once you get past that point, it's actually pretty straightforward to do, um, but getting it to the point where you can actually upload code to your Arduino sometimes can be a challenge. And in this case, I don't think that is untrue. I think that there are some challenges. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would get this program onto our Arduino. After we do that, then I'll talk a little bit about it and uh, what it does. So the first step in Arduino is that you have to go and you have to figure out what port your Arduino is on. Mine is on COM6, and when you when this pops up, my guess is that yours should be somewhat similar, and um, I would try COM6 first. Now, to know that you have the correct one, this get board info thing here, if it is correct, if you have a, an Arduino plugged in, this one will come up as unknown board. Uh, now, if you do that for like, we'll say port three, you'll notice nothing comes up. That means the Arduino is not plugged in. So once you have your port, once you've selected your port, which is not going to be, that'll be COM6. For me, yours might be different. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this little upload button. So what this upload button does is it takes it from your computer and it puts it onto your Arduino in the Arduino's memory. So you'll see the process down here. You can see it says uploading and this one is indeed done uploading. And then if I switch back over to the robot real quickly, what you should see is that all Arduinos have this built-in LED light, which you can see is this green light right here. And that green light right now, you can see blinking in an interval of one second on, one second off. So you should be able to see that if it's doing this with this light right there, then you are in the, the happy zone. Your Arduino has indeed worked out. So now if we go ahead and uh, we go back and forth here a little bit, let's go ahead and explain exactly what happens and why this happens. So Arduino, the programs have two different sections. First off is this setup section. So in setup, what you have to do is set the board up, set it, um, this pin mode thing to be either input or output. So input would be accepting a signal from the Arduino to the computer. But in this case, we are sending a signal out to the computer's output in the form of an electronic signal that is going to turn that light on or off. So the second portion of that, that um, code is then this loop. Arduino is something that's called iterative, which means that it'll run continuously. This loop will run continuously until your Arduino fries or loses battery or whatnot, you unplug it usually. So um, this light right here that you see flashing on and off for one second here, will continue to do that until pretty much the end of time, or we upload new code, which is gonna be what we're doing right now. So um, the other important thing to note in here is that we have this digital write. So digital write is the thing that specifically sends the message to the Arduino. And when you set it to high, that turns the bulb on, and low turns the bulb off. Now, uh, turning the bulb on and off is wonderfully, but you have to remember that computers can iterate over things. They can go and they can run this code faster than our eyes can process it. So the thing we have to also build in is this delay. So the delay makes it so our human brains can actually process the fact 
that that LED bulb is turning on and turning off. Uh, if you did not have this delay, and I can show you this real quick, if we um, actually, as opposed to deleting it, what we can do is we can comment these two forward slashes here that will comment it out. So our code will run without that. Um, and this one is, since it's a demo program, it does not like the fact that I changed it. So um, I had to just resave it in a different spot. So without that code, without the delay, watch what happens to the bulb. Um, if you can see it, and I'll go back to just a robot for a moment here. Um, you'll see that it kind of just looks like the light is on. It just looks like it's staying green. It's kind of hard to see in that light a little bit, um, but it looks like the green light stays on. You notice it's not flashing. Well, with the delay, it actually is flashing. It's just flashing so quickly we can't see it. So with that delay back in, um, as we uncomment that stuff out, what we can do is we can change the number a little bit. Let's just go ahead. So let's just change it to 100. And uh, what this will do is this will make it so it flashes as opposed to one second on, one second off. Uh, this will be essentially 100 milliseconds on, 100 milliseconds off. So it's a much quicker flash. You can take this down. Um, you can even go maybe as, as low as 20. You have to be careful for people that are sensitive to these things a little bit. Um, to not make it flash too much. And you notice every time I make a change, I'm hitting this upload button. And now you can see that it's flashing much, much faster here. Um, it's a much faster flash with 20 milliseconds. So that delay is definitely something that is going to be super important in your program. So we'll turn it back to 100 because 20 is just obnoxious, I think. So that's our first program. Um, I'm just going to upload this one last time, clicking that upload button. Um, now, if you've messed something up, you'll get the orange message of doom down in here. There are some definite things that you could mess up. Every line of code you write has to end with a semicolon. Um, every loop here has to have a an opening and closing curly bracket. And if you've made a code mistake, just let me know. I'll help you look through it. But this is our first little program. So what we've done is we've gotten our code to be able to upload to that. We've talked about what the delay is and kind of just a basic setup about how it works. Now we're going to talk much more extensively about this as we go on and do things to actually make the robot move coming up. But these are kind of the basics right here. We'll layer in some more movement with the wheels for our next video.